Okay guys, so I'm back from a much needed break and what better way to come back than to do videos on these two reels right here. And in case you're wondering, these are the new Arc Baycasters, the Gravity G5, which I believe is in this box and I believe this is the G7. And I'm really excited to get my hands on these reels because let's be honest, out of all the things they released at this year's iCast, all of them were pretty mediocre at best, with the exception of these two reels. Now they're going to be available, I believe, in late October or early November. And these are, what I'm told, pre-production models. But you guys can thank Arc Rods for contacting me and offering to send me these two reels for review. Now as you can see, since they're pre-production models, they have no kind of graphics or writing on the box. But I'm assuming this is the G5 in a 6 ratio, and this is the G7 in a 5 ratio. So hopefully these are right-handed as well. But the G7 box came pretty banged up, but I think the reel will be okay. But in this particular video, we're going to focus on the G5. And that's because this is the more budget-friendly option and probably going to be what most people are going to be looking at. So let's go ahead and open this box. All right. All right. Looks very metanium like in this plastic. But man, look at that. The Gravity G5. Let's make sure this is the G5. And not the. Whoa, 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 that's smooth. But yeah, let me make sure this is truly the G5 and not the G7. Does it say anywhere? Yep, there we go. G5. But. Wow. <laughs> Guys, this feels like it has no gear teeth. This is ridiculously smooth. Glassy even. And this is with the drag cranked up. Wow. So we're going to crank this drag down. And yeah, this this G5, at least mine is ridiculously smooth. Let you guys take a good look at it. See that asymmetrical design? Look at that side plate. So out of the box, oh my god, this feels very, very impressive. Feels solid, feels well made. Like I said, it's so smooth. It doesn't feel like it has gear teeth. Thumb bar is nice and positive, no mush. Very high-end feeling. And this feels like a very, very refined offering straight out of the box from ARC. All right, I'm gonna do my customary inspection, check out the details, and of course, I'm gonna report back to you guys what I find. Okay, so I'm back from my inspection and I really can't stress enough just how well made this gravity g5 reel feels and it looks way more expensive than it is now this reel is supposed to retail for 179 and when i first saw that and i saw the pictures of this reel i thought to myself that's a strange move by arc because being priced at 179 puts it right in the middle of two of the biggest names in baitcasters Shimano's Corrado and Daiwa's Tatula. And then of course you got the Okuma Hakai also occupying around the same price point as well. And that's a reel that gives you so much for your money. 
but now that I have this reel in hand, I am super impressed. I mean, you could just remove the ARK or ARC badge there and put Shimano, and then maybe put Kronark here, and nobody would even bat an eyelash. This reel feels so well made and it looks way more expensive than its price point. I mean, does it make any kind of weird noises, no creaks, no ticks? It is super, super smooth. And in fact, this might be the smoothest non Shimano reel that I've turned the handle on so far. Now it's not the smallest reel out there, but it's not the biggest either. And for size comparison, I brought out my Kronark MGL. And I chose the Kronark because of the color. I didn't want the color to, I guess, skew the look of the size difference, but the Kronark is longer, but the G5 is a little bit wider. And I think the G5 does sit lower. It felt like it palmed lower when I put it on a couple of different rods. And I have to say, the palming ergonomics on this reel are perfect for my hands. Now when I fish bottom contact, I hold the rod and reel just like this. And as you can see, the frame and the entire reel is ergonomically contoured. So since I crank with my right hand, I guess it's uh, kind of slanting over to the right. And yeah, my thumb falls right on the top right here. And you can see the, I guess the joints in my finger fit perfectly right on the front and it starts to angle forward and it just feels so good. And given the fact that the reel's got a nice shining gloss finish instead of, you know, one of those satiny matte finishes that makes reels feel bigger than they are. And the side is just nice and smooth no sharp edges it just feels super super good to palm and i have large to medium size hands now i assume that the left-handed cranking reels are going to be i guess slanted that way or off to the left but i did want to clarify one thing now in my iCast coverage video this year i mistakenly said that this reel shares the same frame as the, I guess, what is it, the YLT Tank AliExpress baitcaster that has an asymmetrical frame just like the G5, but Louis from ARC corrected me and said that this reel is made from all their own custom molds. So this is not the same reel as the YLT Tank that you'll find on AliExpress. Now the frame is made of aluminum, the side plates are made of carbon and these are good looking side plates a lot of detailing and sculpting in the handle side plate as well as the palm side plate that is a good looking design the brake ring is a brighter silver and it appears to be made of metal but then you have the contrasting brake dial that's black and we're going to get more into the brakes a little bit later, but you can see that they have the, I guess, white dashes there instead of numbers. But a very classy design. I don't think anyone can call this reel ugly. Now over on the other side, we have all metal components. We have a metal swept handle that has some nice, I guess, beveling on the edges. I believe it's about 95 millimeters. You have an aluminum drag star that swept forward Shimano style it does click and then we have this nice metal spool tension knob check out the shape of it and that does not click but it is very smooth to turn it takes a little bit of effort but I guess that's so you can't accidentally move it and then you got this nice classy looking trim piece around the gearbox that it does feel like it's made of aluminum but then you got your model number there and this is the 6.4 to 1 gear ratio now speaking of gear ratios 
there's going to be a total of I think four. So you got a five, a six, a seven, all the way up to an eight gear ratio option in both right and left hand. And I think the five gear ratio is a pleasant surprise because five gear ratio reels are becoming pretty scarce these days. But once again, let's talk about this thumb bar. It's got an asymmetrical design, but it is solid. There's no mush, no flex. Whether it's engaged or disengaged, and it's got a lot of real estate, which I like. And a good thing about this thumb bar is that I think they are somewhat emulating Shimano's high thumb bar design, where it sits higher up than other bait casters. Because once you go with Shimano's high thumb bar, it's hard to go back down to a reel that has a lower thumb bar. But very, very classy looking reel. Got your chrome end caps there. These knobs are flat and very, very comfortable. They are what they call TPE, which I'm not sure what that material is, but it's some kind of a rubber. And it is very soft. I'll put it on par with, I guess, Daiwa's rubberized knobs. Maybe a hair softer, but almost as soft as Shimano Septon. So very impressive. And I'm glad they went with these rubber knobs instead of the usual EVA foam you'll get with other reels. Now, another feature they have is the, I guess, line indicator dial to let you know what pound test you're using. And when I studied this, I was looking all around for an external adjustment. But in order to change that, you have to open up the side plate, which I'll show you guys later. But man, this is a good looking reel. Definitely the best looking reel around its price point. And if you want to read all the specs on this reel, go to Tackle Warehouse or I'm going to leave a link to, I guess, Arc Rod's uh, webpage where you can get all the nitty gritty details on all the gravity reels. But with that being said, it is time to get into what really makes this reel stand out from the rest. Okay, so as you can see, the scale is out. And before we get to the biggest standout feature of the Gravity G5, let's get a weight on the reel. And once again, this is not the smallest reel. And it's pretty hefty. It feels pretty solid. It's supposed to weigh 7.1 ounces, I think. And this particular reel weighs 7.29 or pretty much 7.3. Let's weigh that again. Yeah, so pretty much average for these days. This is lighter than the Shimano 200K by about half an ounce, but I believe it's gonna be heavier than Daiwa's Tatula 100, probably by about three tenths of an ounce. So once again, it slots right in the middle of its two biggest competitors. But let's get to the best part of this reel and that's gonna be its brake system. Okay, so I got my special spool scale out and it's time to show you guys what sets these Gravity Series reels, at least the 5 and the 7, apart from all the other bait casters out on the market. And that's going to be its braking system. Now you get to the spool by flipping that lever and it comes out and boom, check that out. Check that out. Now we're gonna get more of the braking system here in a moment, but we are gonna check out this spool. It says GC5, I think. It's got the line capacity, I guess 12 pounds. It'll hold 100 yards. Looks about average for a general purpose bait caster. Not too deep, not too shallow got the long spool shaft design that feels to be made of stainless steel could be wrong about that but check that out does that look familiar does that look familiar to anyone and 
and it does have a spool bearings. So let's get a weight on this spool. Thirteen point eight one seven. Well, thir yeah, thirteen point eight one seven with the bearing. And I'm gonna take the spool bearing off, and we're gonna get a true rotational mass. Okay, so spool bearing is off. Let's see what the total weight is. Twelve point one eight. So. In the grand scheme of things, compared to its competition, like the Shimano Crotto K and the Daiwa Tatula 100, the Gravity G5 spool is much lighter than both of them. I believe the Daiwa Tatula 100 has like a whopping 17 point something gram spool and the Corrado 200K has like a 16 gram spool. So this spool is significantly lighter than either of them. Now, it's not nearly as light as the spool of the Okuma Hakai, but then again, there aren't too many general purpose baitcast reels that have a spool lighter than that. But coming in at 12.1 grams, this is actually lighter than the Shimano Metanium spool. So very impressive for the G5. Now let's get into what makes this special, and that's gonna be these brakes. So not surprisingly, this brake system is called the Gravity Control Braking System. And what makes this special and sets it apart from other braking systems is that this seems to be a hybrid of probably two of the most advanced purely magnetic brake systems in the world. And that is Shimano's FTB, Finesse Tune Brake, and Daiwa's Magforce 3D. And I say that because it combines elements of both of those brake systems and I'm going to show you how. Now to do that I brought out my T3 Ballistic and this reel has the Magforce 3D brake system from Daiwa. Let me make sure I can still open up this side plate. Here we go. Okay so here's the typical Daiwa spool that's got its rotor or inductor and as you can see with the gravity g5 it appears to have one of those as well now what makes die was magforce 3d special is that not only do you have your typical you know magforce external adjustment you have this big adjustment here which I'm going to try to show you guys where you can toggle between max brake all around and long cast. So you do that by flipping this switch just like that. All right. So when you're flipping that switch, it brings this brake hub closer or farther away to the actual spool and rotor, which of course, is dynamic anyway and it you know pops out and retracts but let me show you how that works so I think we are in either long cast or max break but all right so this is all around and then that's max break so see how going from long cast to max break brings this brake mechanism closer to the spool just like that. Now it's bewildering to me why Daiwa doesn't choose to put this brake system in their more high-end reels, namely the Steez, but hopefully they'll do that in the future. But that's pretty much what Magforce 3D is. Then once again, once you're in, I guess, a setting, you have your fine tuning with the Magforce dial. Now this is how Arc's gravity control system works similar to Daiwa's 3D. Now with this system, you have three major adjustments. And instead of adjusting the entire brake hub with an external dial like with the Daiwa, you actually adjust this rotor here. So if you take a look at the inside of the rotor, you got Roman numerals. You got your one, 
your two, and your three. So right now it's on the number three setting and I can tell that by the silver spool pin on both top and bottom. So let's take a look at the position of the rotor, or at least how far it pops out while it's on number three. All right, so to make an adjustment, you just push down on the rotor and you twist it. So now it's on two. And hopefully you guys can see the silver brake pin nestled, I guess, into the slot of the number two. And we're gonna go to number one now. Turn it down and then you twist. And now we are on number one. And let's take a look at the position of the rotor now. See how it's sunk in farther down than setting number three? Let me show you number two. And then let's go to number three again. So there doesn't look to be that huge a difference between two and three, at least visually for me. But the number one is definitely set farther down than the number two or three, which theoretically should give you the least amount of brakes. So it's kind of like the long cast mode of Dios 3D. Number two would be, I guess, your all around mode. And number three would be your max brake. Now, unlike Daiwa's Mag Force, once again, I guess to avoid patent infringement, the rotor does not pop out during the cast, it's fixed. But this still is a dynamic brake system and that brings me to this part of the brakes. And that is the actual magnetic hub. And this is the part that works like Shimano's FTB. But they kind of work in the opposite fashion. Now what happens is this rotor slots right here, just like that. And of course the rotor interacts with these magnets, but what makes the magnets dynamic is that they're spring loaded on one side just like Shimano's FTB. So yeah, see that travel right there? Now this side is not spring loaded only this side. Now it doesn't move very far but it probably doesn't have to and it's the same with this other bank. Looks like less than a millimeter of travel to me but hopefully Arc has tested this braking system and tuned it so that the travel is enough but I like how they gave it this red color just to kind of liven things up. So basically during the hardest part of the cast where the spool is spinning the fastest like right at the beginning one side of these brakes will pull closer to the rotor to slow the spool down and then as the spool speed decreases they'll retract back down now with such little travel I don't know if it's a gradual retraction or if it's just gonna pop down in a sudden motion but yeah that's how arcs patented gravity control brake system works and kudos to them for bringing us a new sophisticated brake system but only time out on the water is going to tell how well it's going to work but this is the reason why i really wanted to try out one of these reels and once again give a shout out to arc for having the courage to send me not only their g5 but their top of the line g7 as well because not a lot of manufacturers are willing to send me reels due to the kind of testing that I do where I put them up against competitor reels in measure cast battles. But with such a lightweight spool, I have high hopes that this reel will be a devastating caster. Now, just to wrap up on these brakes, once you've chosen your internal, I guess, rotor setting, you can fine tune with the external dial, which I believe brings the magnetic hub closer or farther away and this external dial has a total of 37 clicks so a total of 38 external settings and when you combine them with the three internal settings you have a whopping 114 points of adjustment and that's literally insane I think the only other reel that has more adjustability than this 
gravity control system is going to be Shimano's SPS Infinity. So that's really saying something. So yeah, let's twist this dial. Yeah, so you can see the brake hub retracting and extending as I turn the external dial. Now the external dial, it feels really solid. Now the clicks are not the loudest or the most positive, but they feel pretty good. But yeah, a very well executed braking system by ARC. Okay, so to end this video, let's talk about ARC real quick. Now in the grand scheme of things, ARC is a relatively new company. I think they've been out probably less than 10 years. I want to say I saw their rods on Tackle Warehouse first about five years ago, maybe more. But what really grabbed my attention about their rods was that they had this really nice, aggressive, clean, modern JDM styling. Definitely not your good old boy Bubba style rods that a lot of companies here in America will try to give you. And over the years, they've gained a very popular following. I've never heard one bad thing said about an arc rod. Now, I've never tried one myself, but I might in the future. But now they've ventured off into reels. And let me tell you, Arc is not the only rod company that is trying to come out with baitcast reels. But what separates Arc's reels from the rest is that these seem to be truly unique proprietary designs that give us a truly innovative brake system. While the other reels that I've seen from the other rod companies seem to be just rebadged, recolored Chinese OEM reels. They give you the same old Magtrax static magnetic system that you'll find on, you know, $30 bait casters. But no, not these Gravity Series reels from ARC, at least with the G5 and the G7. But what really impressed me so far is that this reel feels so solid. Like I said, you can slap a Shimano badge on this thing and nobody would question you. But looks aside and the quality aside, of course the next thing we gotta do is we gotta test out these brakes and hopefully it's not gonna be raining this weekend like it's been and I'll be able to string this reel up and see what this gravity control brake system is all about and I already have some tests in mind that I want to try with it so once again you guys give a shout out to arc rods for sending me these reels and once again these are gonna be available I believe in late October or early November I think you can pre-order either on Arc Rod's website or go to Tackle Warehouse. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.